Hey guys, so I'm going to show you how I built this uh, Varavon motor controlled slider. Um, obviously I didn't build the slider, but uh, the motor, the servo, um, the servo controller, which is this bit here, uh, the battery pack, uh, housing it inside the, the black box at the back, and ultimately the interface that allows me to control the whole unit using uh, this Canon time-lapse controller. Now the time-lapse controller now enables me to set a delay, set uh, intervals for pulsing the motor along and very you know varied settings to allow me to control the motor. Um, I'm going to show you now just a quick demo of what you can do just by pressing the button on the front of the time-lapse as if you were setting uh, or, or pressing the shutter on the camera. Um, you can control the speed and the direction using this controller. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it full one way so you can see the maximum speed of the servo motor. Okay, I turn the dial on the controller, the servo controller all the way the other way and that's the whole way the other way. Okay, you can slow it right down. Okay. And um, basically any settings, uh, speed and direction can be done on the servo controller down here. Um, and then you can activate it using the controller up here. Now, once you have all that um, all set up, I'm going to show you how I made it and the components within it. Um, it's very, very simple. There is no um, expertise in uh, soldering or wiring or anything really needed. It's just very, very basic. Um, what uh, I'm just going to show you also some of the extra settings you can do with the time lapse controller. So, uh, for instance, if I put it all the way to one end, okay, and on the controller, I'm going to set a delay of five seconds, um, and then I'm going to make it move uh, for one second uh, five times, okay. So, I'm changing the long. Uh, the long setting to one second and the number of times to do it to five. Okay. Um, now what I can do is I've set the uh, motor to go the other direction. Um, so it's going that way. All right. And uh, start the timer. Okay. So it's going to go off now. So that's one second, two, three, four and five okay so that's all done with this um, time-lapse controller obviously that's uh, once you um, start thinking about it you can use this to really slow the motor down put lots and lots of intervals in and hopefully it will give you some really good uh, time-lapse photography um, you can set another one of these up onto your camera to kind of sync them together I guess I haven't really tried that yet but uh, I'm sure it'll be a good project to try. Okay, so let's get into the, the, the nuts and bolts of um, how to build the servo and uh, specifically the interface, which is the, the bit that I came up with. Um, okay, so let's get to it. Okay, so the first part, I guess, is we should have a look inside the motor uh, and see the components. So uh, to begin with, Let's take this off. In fact, actually, let's take the whole thing off um, the slider. Uh, so we just take off the leg. Um, take that part off and open up the box. So really, um, there are four components of this. Um, there is the controller, the servo controller. There is um, the motor. Or the servo and then there is the battery pack okay so um, here we go um, let's just take those off I'll take it out of the housing okay so this part is the servo okay um, You'll see that in the description, um, that 
will have a link to um, where I bought this. You have to make sure that it's a 360 degree continuous servo. Otherwise, what will happen is the servo will only go 180 degrees one way, 180 degrees the other way, and it will stop each side. Um, you want a continuous one, um, so it will just keep going round and round. Um, the cogs and stuff I found inside uh, uh, an old printer of mine. Just pulled it apart and um, found uh, the, the cogs inside and just screwed it onto the top of the servo motor. Okay, um, so unfortunately that is the only bit that you're going to have to try and be a little bit resourceful and see if you can find something that you can put on top. Um, okay, so that's uh, the servo. This is going to plug uh, directly into the controller, okay? So the controller is, again, the, in the description, you're going to see a link on eBay to, um, to one of those. And this is going to plug straight into the servo, okay? So if we put that in, making sure the contacts are the right way around. Um, so I think it goes that way, okay? And then lastly, you have your battery pack, just standard uh, AA batteries, four of them, uh, to power the motor and the controller. Um, so again, we'll put that in the right way around. There you go, and um, off the motor goes, okay? So you have a standard dial on the front, and it allows you to turn it one way or the other, okay? So that is your basic setup for a motor, okay? Um, that's going to pretty much get you moving uh, the uh, slider along um, in its basic form. Okay. Okay, so now you've created your basic setup of the battery to the controller to the servo. Now, what you want to do is uh, break the circuit between the controller and the servo. So you'll see that there are three lines connecting uh, the two. Um, there is a plus, there is a minus, and there is an S signal line as well. Now, what's happening is the controller is sending a waveform to the motor to tell it which way to go and at what speed. Now, what you want to do is set it so you have broken that line and your shutter controller um, is going to create that connection again when you either press the button or uh, set the delay or what, whatever you want on the controller, okay? So really and truly, all you need to do is break that line, um, the signal line, and put in a jack plug socket between the two, okay? So I didn't really want to actually cut the wires and stuff. I just wanted to make a little interface in between the two. So that's what this is. So you can see that it's pretty basic. All it has is um, line in and out um, going on the back of this normal strip board. Um, so it just connects the two. The plus and minus signs uh, sides are just straight through, they connect together. So the plus and minus on this side link straight through to the plus and minus on that side. Um, and the signal, all, all that happens is it comes in through the controller, through the jack plug socket, out the other side, and down the other end towards the servo. Okay, so literally all you're doing is putting that socket in between the two. Okay. Um, you want to have, a, again, on the description, it will show you um, on the end of the, the controller, on the jack plug, the 2.5 mil jack plug, um, one of the contacts, because this is a stereo one, one of the contacts is for the focus and the other one is for the shutter. Now, I've connected it up to the shutter, um, which means that you have to connect it onto uh, the, the, the right connectors on the socket. Okay, that's really the only bit that you have to kind of look up. Um, and that's it, that's all you have to do. So what I'm gonna do is now, um, if you, you can see without this interface, I can move the motor left and right. Okay, now what I'm going to do is place in the interface or this jack socket um, into here. Again, I have to make sure that you've got the right size, so plus and minus um, connect to the right sides. So that goes in there, 
and this one is plus or minus is that side there okay so now the signal won't get through okay so if I turn the motor nothing is happening okay now I'm gonna plug in the controller on here okay now when I press the button basically it's just connecting the two wires together okay so I set the speed on the controller press the button and the motor is going to work okay so now I can let the um, time-lapse controller do all the work so I can set delays I can basically use any of the functions on here to um, allow the signal to get through to the motor and that is it that is the nuts and bolts of the time-lapse controlled motor uh, slider so um, I hope that's been useful um, and if you have any questions about how I built it or any of the parts, um, have a look in the description. Otherwise, leave a comment and I'll see if I can get back to you. Again, thanks for watching and good luck with your project.